Good evening. You are on uh, Monday Night Live, normally Tuesday. You're DJ ST and we're on the Beat Radio Bali. And I've got a very special guest tonight. My old mate and my old work companion, uh, Chris Lee. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> good, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Well, we're going live. We're going live all over the planet right now on the radio, on Twitch, on many different platforms. Sorry to intrude the music, but we do this occasionally. Um, now, Chris has just come back from the USA. Mm -hmm. uh, you were saying before uh, something about getting a motorbike. Yeah. Mm. So um, I had lost my passport over in Bali, and I had to go back for a new passport. Mm. And I figured uh, it was going to take two to three months to get a passport. And I was just like, you know, like, how do I spend the least amount of money and have the most amount of fun in America? Mm. So I just decided to buy a motorcycle uh, when I landed in San Francisco and just load it with camping gear and mm. just do the Pacific Northwest or the West or the desert. I had no idea what I was going to do. I just knew I was going to buy a motorcycle. I remember doing that myself uh, many years ago, but was with, with a bicycle. Oh, what? But in Europe. Wow. And, uh, you know, there's a fitness angle to it, too. But yeah, to, uh, <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> well, yeah. well, eventually, because I'd, I'd bung my bloody knee the summer before, so I thought I'd better do something with it, and riding a bike seemed to make sense, but, and I ended up going through the whole of France, but, uh, which is quite a good and another story. But, but similar thing, just buying the... The camping Holy, gear. Yeah. It wasn't even camping gear. It was just a piece of plastic, really, a tarpaulin. And, and I just thought, figured I'll figure it out as I go. Yeah, that's Was that more, like I, it? I think that's even more fascinating. Like, how, where do you sleep? I mean, for me, at <laughs> least, you know, camping off the motorcycle, you, like, simultaneously have too much stuff mm. and not enough stuff, you know, because there's only so much you can pack. And, yeah. like, on a bicycle. I think that's what the reason I didn't have a tent. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any space for it. Like, and I would just sleep on the on the top island, but I had a weatherproof um, like sleeping, uh, bag, sleeping bag, bivy, like okay. an army kind of style thing. And you, I don't know. Anyway, it was a long time ago. I was, I was cool, very, how cool I was very young. It was summer. You know. Okay, well, it was summer. It's cool. Easier, and yeah. there's nothing like you know riding a bicycle in, in uh, France during summer. The best place on earth. But I don't know about California and on your BMW motorbike. Yeah, well, and know, in the middle of a pandemic, pandemic, and there were like crazy wildfires as well, which mm. were kind of gnarly. Um, you know, is is it, it was super lucky I actually got that motorcycle because I was looking for two bikes specifically: a uh, BMW F six fifty GS or a Kawasaki KLR six fifty, which are these kind of like big, kind of off road adventure mm. bikes. And uh, I get to San Francisco, and I'm doing, like, the Facebook classifieds and the Craigslists and the auto traders. I'm just looking at all the dealerships, and I'm striking out every single one of them. Too expensive or just failing Outside my price range yeah. or not the right bike or, you know, just too old or too many miles. And it's a lot of time and effort to go and check out all these things yeah mm -hmm. so then i'm like stressed i'm already stressed about this trip and then uh my mom's like james and adam hit them up and james and adam were my neighbors in bali when i was like nine or ten mm -hmm. and i'm like you know it's pandemic time they're a little older i don't you know i don't think they want to see me my mom's like just hit them up and uh, James had become um, the mayor of this town called Belvedere, which is like the richest part of San Francisco. It's it like sounds it's, like a name like that. Yeah, it's like it's its own <laughs> island. You know what I mean? Mm. It just it's just super rich. <laughs> good good neighbors, right? <laughs> so I just hit him up, and I'm just like, "Hey, man, I'm in town." He's like, "How long are you in town for?" And I'm like, "You know, just just enough time to get a motorcycle." And he's like, "What are you looking for?" like KLR 650 or F650 GS and he's like F650 GS mm. I got one of those right <laughs> and I was like what and he's like I haven't ridden years man you you buy mine what's your budget and I was like oh like 2500 he's like I can make that work mm. and uh he had like a way newer bike than I was looking for and he literally sold it like a grand or two under market. Nice. Good for him. Yeah, no, it was, it was super awesome. Like, that really kind of saved my trip, I think. But he's he's kind of loaded anyway, so it didn't really matter. Or... Yeah, yeah. He was like, um, 
he was he was like i bought the motorcycle because you know i just want to be a little more carbon conscious didn't want to drive a car but now i got these two teslas so <laughs> <laughs> his footprints is less yeah. well apparently yeah i guess there's so. a much use baby you read but anyway right um so yeah so you packed up your pally panion panion bags is that it yeah paneer bags um, yeah yeah i had like uh like my buddy willis was super nice he lent me a tent it was like a really nice ultralight tent and I bought a sleeping bag that was rated to like 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which, you know, um, wasn't enough. And I'll, you know, we'll go into that later, I'm sure. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I had like a, a sleeping mat that a buddy had like hooked me up with. And um, with that, I was on the road. Yeah, sure. You can fit quite a lot on a bike, right? They're pretty big. Yeah. Bags. Yeah. I mean, I, I bought pretty cheap ones. I bought like these saddle ones. I mean, I could fit a lot, I guess. But when you when you count like water and, and a backpack or something, a backpack and there was like a little box on it and the little little thing that goes on your tank. Did you have one of those? I you know I only got one of those like way later in the trip. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, motorcycle stuff is just expensive, man. Mm. Yeah. Sure. And I, you know, I had like zero income coming in, so I was like, "I'm just gonna do this as cheaply as possible." When was this? Uh, this was about August, a little mid-August. All right. Yeah. Last year, mm-hmm. we're in August again now. Yeah. Um, so it's summer. The weather's pretty good. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, but when you drive up from San Francisco to Seattle and you take the coastal road. It's real foggy and real cold. Okay. Like the temperature was like, I don't know, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius. It's probably cold. like 10, yeah. less than 10. Well, 37 is freezing point. Then. Yeah. So it's pretty cold. It is cold. It was cold, and I didn't really have the clothes for it. Like wind was penetrating my jacket. I was cold. I was cold the what was day. the reason for going up to Seattle? Uh, it was just whimsical. I had some college buddies up there. Mm. I had a cousin up there, and I, yeah, like you know, I had a buddy from Bali actually up there. So I had mm. a bunch of friends, and you know, the whole idea of taking the coastal road—it's nice and windy. There's a lot of national forest on mm-hmm. the way. Sure. And my big, plan was big oak woods. Yeah, is redwoods. It? Is it? Yeah, redwoods. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was beautiful. I was in California many years ago, but uh, I didn't go any north to the north of the golden gate bridge really oh it's like a different place mm. it's like uh it's once you're in the pacific northwest it's completely a different mm. biome <laughs> yeah but, but it's like country right real country yeah but there's just like big trees yeah, yeah. and it's just really dense and it's it's a lot of the same to be honest you know just big pine trees everywhere and hills and <laughs> beautiful rivers and and deer and the, yeah and uh whatever buffalo or something i don't know what do you uh, got out too there? much buffalo but definitely bears you yeah. know yeah hmm. so did you come across any wildlife when, when you're camping out there in the wild you know the only real wildlife were the fucking people <laughs> <laughs> You know, there are people you'd, like, literally <laughs> just talk to for about 10 minutes, and you're like, how do I get out of this? <laughs> and that, <laughs> real and, and you're in the middle of the forest, right? Really? Yeah, you know, here's a campsite. <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit dangerous when they pull out their big knife or something. Right? Oh, right. <laughs> I did run into one guy. Hmm. It was super interesting. Hmm. It was in the in the Rogue River in Oregon. That driven into, like, you know, deep in the forest. I didn't want to pay for campsites. And in America and federal land, you can kind of camp wherever you want. Mm. So I'm deep in this river bank. And I, I see this Native American dude and he's fishing and he's like, come over later, have some beers. I'm like, cool. Go over, see him. He's got one eye, mm. Native American dude. And uh, he's like, dude, but you got all sorts of drugs on this road trip of yours, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, no. Nah. Not really, not that kind of trip. Just kind of on a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. And he looks at me, he's like... I'm going fast enough on the motorbike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he looks at me, he's like, well, you got any cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> you boys from the south. Yeah, and I was like, no, no, no cocaine. And he's like, well, I got some mushrooms. You want to do some mushrooms tonight? And I'm like, sure, why not? And he pulls why out Why wouldn't you? Yeah, right? You know, like, fuck it. <laughs> he pulls out these like two little pills and they're like gel tabs or, you know, like those mm. little tabs with the powdered mushroom. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on there. This is hardcore. 
Yeah, I'm like, this is uh, not natural, is it? Is it? Is I mean, it I guess he's like his ground up synthesized, or is it? No, I just didn't know how hard I was gonna trip. You know, I was just like, man, I'm on like this motorcycle by myself, and this is like day. This is like night two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's still kind of raw. In the middle of nowhere, or in some sort of town? No, in the middle of nowhere, mm. nowhere. Like mm. no cell phone signal. Like deep, deep in uh, what they call it, <laughs> Rogue River, Saskatoon National Forest. Right. And, and, uh, it's, and it's you and the Red Indian guy. Yeah. And you haven't seen anybody else that day kind of thing. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Yeah, no, 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 no. Like, we're far away from people. That's for sure. And then uh, I thought, I'm like, I don't know about this guy. And he looks at me with his one eye, and he's like, you can't be living scared, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. He's still straight through you. <laughs> I was just like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> Well, maybe at that point you should have run. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, it was a great night, you know, like we were tripping a little bit. And, you know, we polished off this bottle of Fireball together. And, um, What's Fireball? It's like this cinnamon whiskey that's, like, really prevalent if you're, like, in high school in America. You're okay. looking for something. It's cheap. It's cheap and it's, like, it's real just cinnamony, you know? Like, it's, like... Like Jammu or something. Yeah, but mm. it's, it's great, you know? Um, <laughs> Whatever gets you high, man. So I, tell, I, got, I talk to this guy, and I'm like, hey, man, you know, this is a great night, and um, appreciate the bottle and appreciate the mushrooms. I brought my drone. Let me take some drone photos of you fishing, and, you know, that's my, like, thank you, and, you know, I'll send them to you, whatever. And he's like, okay, well, I'm going to I'll be fishing early in the morning, like, break of dawn. I'm like, well, how do I know you're awake? And he'll, he's like, oh, you'll know. <laughs> Shit. And I'm like, all right, stumble out to my tent, fall asleep. And then I wake up to these like wild gunshots, like plat, 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 plat. Wild gunshots. And uh, I walk down the river, and this guy has a rifle, a semi auto rifle, and he's just wildly shooting at these like fucking seagulls. <laughs> and he's just like manic. Like, I hate these fucking seagulls. <laughs> I'm just like, all right. <laughs> so, uh, so he wake you up, all right? Yeah, anyway, he was super cool. Like, he mm. hooked me, you know. We, so, it didn't get weird on your during the night or anything? Nah, or nah, he was a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, yeah. You get, did you get far out there or not? Or just kind of mildly out there? Oh, on the shrooms? Mm. Oh, mildly. Mildly. Mm. Well, they weren't. They weren't it didn't fall into big. a shroom hole or something? No, no. Mm. They, were, they were super chill, actually. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it was nice. I mean, there were a lot of stars and shit, and we had pretty regular conversation. And That's cool. You can never judge a book by the cover right yeah he's a good guy yeah, yeah he was just happy to be doing drugs with someone i think he was all like my wife's a square she works at a bank <laughs> but he, so he was on holiday from somewhere too i guess yeah, yeah yeah pretty much yeah he's not just sort of living out in the woods no <laughs> no i mean he kind of looked like he was but <laughs> he could be yeah i mean he had a pickup truck and like the bed was just full of junk <laughs> <laughs> like, like maybe his wife was a dream as well but yeah <laughs> he's a good guy hard to say yeah you do meet some weird weird sort of characters out on the road right oh my you know, god dude yeah everywhere but i have too uh, you know but you know i'm back in my traveling days well i find like you know when you're you're a solo traveler you know you, you go to a group of people they're like they're friendly but they're like ah you know mm. I mean, you kind of seek out other solo travelers in a way, and they're sure. always like super stoked to make a friend, and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. or sure. for better or for worse. Cause... Well, preferably female, I guess, if you, <laughs> if you could find one. But... Oh, I saw none of those. <laughs> no way. There was one attractive park ranger at Yellowstone who pretty sure wanted nothing to do with me but. <laughs> had, a, had a hand on a gun the whole time <laughs> <laughs> seen you guys she did she did give me a camp spot on a campsite that was completely full though so and that, I mean, cool. yeah yeah so you have to pay the ranger or something for the, these spots uh you, or is it kind of free? You know, uh, Yellowstone is super regulated. Yeah, like you have to be in a designated campsite. It's uh, it's like national park. You have to be in their designated sites. National forest, anywhere. Mm. Shoot guns, mm. do anything you want, hunt, fish. But national parks are like super regulated. You can't do anything. <laughs> nah, it's like nothing. a big park, city park or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's built for tourists and like national forests or you know blm land or you know it's just like mm. this is this is land owned by the government and you can do whatever you want kind of thing yeah how about 
you know, the Red Indians, like they have tracts of land uh, through those forests or not? Oh, well, that was the thing about that one-eyed Indian, Ryan. He was like, he wanted to shoot a seal. He just kept on ranting about wanting to shoot a seal, you know, and it was like kind of unhinged shooting. And he was like, I'm Dave Barry. This is my land. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> Many seals? <laughs> yeah, because I was like, man, you know, it's a lot of shooting. Like, is this cool, you know? Yeah. And he was just like, this is my land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're, like, from, but you're from Texas. You know all about those guns. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just, I was just but just, seals aren't they kind of in the cold ice or something? <laughs> no, apparently. You know, I was because we were like pretty like inland, and mm. he's like, yeah, seals swim all the way up river, like right. hundreds of miles, to like eat the salmon in the rivers. Mm. So I was like, all right, well, that's kind of a cool fact. Yeah, There's seals in them ri- their <laughs> river. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see any? No, oh. I was looking. I mean, like, yeah. you know, up the coast, yeah, you see them in the river mouths and stuff. And you see them swim up and down. But up north, where it's cold, I guess, no? Oh, we've been in see California. It? Even mm. by San Francisco. Oh, yeah, Big Sur and all that. that. Doesn't have seals sort of hanging on the rocks in the yeah. photos. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, they yeah. used to before they shot them all. Right. <laughs> no, yeah. there are a lot of them. They're kind of scary. I don't know. They're big and, you know. Mm. Yeah. Imagine. They haven't got arms. They haven't got legs. They're kind of really weird. And they look like you're chew your arm off yeah right so you, you eventually made it up to seattle made it to seattle um linked up my buddy willis and um i had a friend that was like a tattoo artist and another friend who worked at a brewery brewing beer so they were kind of like super socialites and um mm-hmm. their kind of respective area i went to college with them okay good beer great beer yeah so i mean this guy basically like for a week almost ah for like three days we were just going to brewery after brewery just getting lit you know just trying There's all loads these. of breweries tons of them in seattle or all over the place seattle and tacoma we went to they're kind of like cities that are pretty close to each other it's kind of like seminyak and changu that close i mean kind of ish you know like there's so boutique breweries are the latest thing, or they've been around forever. I think they've been around for or whatever forever, and uh, they're like they're just going up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like more people brew, the beards are getting better. Every place has at least like eight or nine of their own, and they have like a curated beer menu of and that, stuff that, around town. It's like a bar as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a party kind of thing too. Oh yeah, they're like bars, gardens, restaurants, you know. They're all about their craft beers right now. Mm. Oh, that seems to be going all over the world except for here. Oh, well, I mean, you got oh. Black Sands and oh, yeah. Kura Kura. Whoa. You but, had the Stark place for a little while. No, right? but as far as like like Black Sand did it really well. I don't know if right. they really do they brew it anyway. They do, do they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not that they make a big deal of it. You don't see vats and everything there, or do you? I can't. I, I don't know. I don't think so. No. Um, but yeah, there's. I know that's uh, that's the thing, isn't it? They have the big stainless steel vats, and it kind of feels like you're in the yeah. middle of something, <laughs> something special. And that's cool, you know. It's like the wineries, and you exactly. know, the winery sort of took off first, right? Well, then you get these like beer snobs, right? You know, like how's the nose on this? Too hoppy really? for my test. <laughs> this hint of grapefruit, a little too much. <laughs> that's because they spilled the grapefruit. In it. <laughs> no, but it's good to uh, develop these things, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm. And because you know, my buddy was a brewer. You know, we could go out these spots, and he's just like, right. try this one, try this one. He knew. He one. knew what was going on. Yeah, and I mean, it's expensive or not? Like all these imported beers, they'd be very expensive. But you know, no, I mean, not particularly. I mean, it'd be like you know, five bucks for a sixteen ounce for a pint. You know, which is yeah. like pretty. And reasonable. that's a normal thing, like in a saloon bar or something. Yeah, that's the same yeah. sort of price. Yeah, five bucks. About five okay. bucks ish. You know, like a little high on some, a little low on others. Yeah, but yeah, about five ish. Kind of. That's like fifty thousand. No, that's that's like seventy thousand. Yeah. yeah, but five bucks in America isn't a lot. You know what I mean? Everyone's getting paid so much. Yeah, is that right? I mean, well, you know, is it not? <laughs> they getting like fifteen bucks an hour. So yeah. Actually, I saw. Um, you know, they're talking about the minimum wage and everything, and and I saw the uh the minimum wage is actually officially seven and a half dollars a. An yeah, hour. yeah, no, it's terrible. You like, can't. Wow. You Who can't, gets paid that? Like the waiter or something? Uh, waiters get paid yeah. in Texas. They get paid two dollars fifteen cents an hour, mm. and they rely on tips. Yeah, I mean it's the ultimate con, right? You know, like 
as a restaurant owner, you just have to pay Forget your waiters, it. yeah, two and a half dollars. <laughs> That's then, cheaper than here. Yeah, and then uh, and then you rely on the customers to pay their wages, it's, and you're already taking the money off them. Exactly, and you're already like priced out your food. It's it's, it's not it's not as if it's uh, cheap food and it, booze, right? It's it's the amazing like. But it's, that's it's a great con. America yeah. has always been that way, right? Yes, it, America is not a good place for a worker. I mean, it's better than China. No, what I mean but... is the tipping, and, you know, the, <laughs> yeah. tipping, the tipping thing. Yeah. Because it's not really that big anywhere else. Well, you, people leave the change, but it's not like you're expected to tip. Right. So I, yeah, I don't how know. How did that come? Where I, did that come from? I have no idea. I don't know if that's like by design, but I mean, for a restaurant owner, it's amazing when you that's think good. about it, right? Mm. I mean, having to pay your guys two dollars 15 cents an hour mm. and it's up to the guests to pay in the more yeah yeah but that we do well i have a restaurant but you do have a service charge on the on the bill here which True. is but that's on top right yeah that's like a bonus normally no, which is sort of uh like the tip but it's already taken by the establishment to give back to exactly the, to the waiter yeah so you have to pay them. which is fair i mean i hear some places i mean the service charge is amazing like water yeah. bomb pre-pandemic oh, cool. i mean i heard they're yeah. making like four sure. or five mil each on just on service you know yeah the hotels the big hotels they're making eight ten million yeah, yeah. so you could be like a gardener you know making like a mill and a half a month and then all of a sudden that five mil yeah. you know check comes in you and know, that's, that's why they're lined up down the road you know anytime there's a job coming oh well, that's right and it's all taken by the families and have been there for 50 years yeah which is fair you know you know, the keep old it, nepotism. Keep it in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lives strong. So, uh, it's but not in the U.S. It's, a, it's an open, it's a free land. Anything's possible. Yeah, so... Um, Is it still like that? What do you mean? Like the land of the free, land of the, you know... I mean, to a, to a certain well, when extent. When it comes to vaccines, and, uh, I notice. Yeah, yeah. Vaccines were super easy to get when it's I certain, left. Well, not free as in gratis, but, but it's your choice, you know? It's freedom of choice, not not free as as, as oh, a financial thing. I, I don't think it's you politically. You can do anything you want in America, right? Yeah, I don't think it's politically possible to have any type of like vaccine passport or mm. any vaccine database. Even I mean, mm. if you look at the card they give you, it's literally like a handwritten card, you know. And I for for the vaccine, okay. It's literally like a CDC card. It's handwritten. And they just pretty much put stickers on it with their little vaccine okay. lot number. All right. But there's no serial number to it. There's just your name, your date of it's birth. Not logged into the computer. The hospital something. you took it in is mm. handwritten. I mean, I think it's designed that way on purpose, mm. you know, because Americans are, you know, famously paranoid and distrustful they of the don't government. Like to, yeah, they don't like to be controlled, do they? I mean, when I got my national park card, mm. it's literally like, here's your park card. Don't lose it. We don't database these things. Write your name on it because we don't know your name. And you can write another name on it if you want. But that's it. You mm-hmm. know, you lose it. It's gone. Yeah. You know, we don't Someone else database is anything. Yeah. And if you haven't got it when the dude arrives, you, you have to pay the fine. Uh, Which is fair enough. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, but all around the world right now, they're, they're, they're talking about these uh, green cards or vaccine cards. Yeah, you know, it's it's just hard, you know, like I don't know. I think I think you have to look at it from like a public health perspective, right? I mean, you're in charge. You're like you're not the decision maker, you're not the president. You're just the guy in public health and you're like mm. looking at the numbers, you're like mm. your entire job is just to like have as minimal death as possible, right? Well, that's a, that's the case all around. They're the ones that are deciding no, they're recommending the way we go forward. They're recommending, and then well, you yeah, know the no, powers but, that. But everybody, be. but everybody, every time they get in front of a microphone, they they say they they're following the science, right? Correct. So the science is coming from, but the sci- health department. Yeah, but science and policy are like two different things, right? Yeah, but as I say, when they, as soon as they get in front of a uh, thing, they go, "All right, we're following the science." If well, in like, Australia, they do, yeah, they do. Well, if they were following the science, you know, I mean, I think we'd still be in our homes, right? Like completely locked down. There'd be well, soldiers. That's on the why. That's why they <laughs> have to take all the guns back first, right? You know, that's 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 following the science, right? Like right, that's the difference, isn't it? The science versus the the economic science are two different two different beasts. Well, I mean, that's I, what we're experiencing now. I think I think people look at it um, 
in like binary terms, you know, it's either on or off, right? It's like, why do I need the vaccine if, you know, if I can yeah, get but... infected? That's like an on and off kind of like thought, right? Or why is it that, you know, the supermarkets so are open and not bars? It's like on or off mm. in their mind. Mm. And I think that's kind of the wrong way to look at it. I mean, I think you got to look at it more in a numerical sense, right? I mean, okay, so for example, the original COVID, the mm. original virus, the very first one the to Chinese come out of Wuhan mm. had an R value of 2.5. And the R value means, you know... How many people are going to affect? Yeah, mm. so 2.5 and those 2.5 give it 2.5 and it's 2.5 times 2.5 and it's exponential, right? And that's Moves without, very quickly. Yes, and that's with no restrictions. There's no yeah. mask, no hand washing, no you know restrictions. That's just like normal everyday life. Mm. This Delta variant mm. has an R value of eight. Yeah, it's quick. It's super quick. But so, maybe the point is that uh, the virus is is going to get as many people as you know as it's born to get. You know, nothing's going to stop it in the end. Well, I mean, I think. I think when you're a public health official, yeah. you know, you're like, you got to eight, you got to bring it to one or below, right? So no, you're but like, what I'm saying is that the, the, the virus is bigger than any science or any control of it. It's eventually going to take whoever it has to take, um, you know, there's uh, a possibility of that. Right. But as a public health official. They have to do whatever they can to stop it. Yeah. And, you know, you think you can stop it and, you know, you're you're trying to work out ways to stop it. And mm. you're like, okay, well, you know, if we do masks and like 80% of people comply, we might chip away one out of that eight and we bring it down to seven. Sure. And then, you know, we'll do Eventually, vaccines. And, well, the vaccines are probably going to work better than anything. Yeah. Like, you know, like maybe, or but, but then, not. but then you're thinking of compliance too, right? Like how many people are actually getting the vaccine? And you're like, okay, if 70% of people are actually willing to get the vaccine, enough. we'll chip away Let's two say. or three. And mm. then we're left with four. And then we got to restrict travel. They'll chip away another 0.8. You know what I mean? They're just they're just pulling out tools mm. out of a belt. Mm. But then they're tools that they can't pull out, right? It's not like, hey, we're going to cancel Eudel Futri. You know what I mean? Or <laughs> we're going to cancel, cancel your lives for a year. <laughs> yeah, we're going to cancel <laughs> no. ceremonies. You know what I mean? Like, they can't. That's that's a tool no, they, they can't, can't touch, right? Here, here in this country, they can't really lock down anyway. Exactly. Because nobody's got enough money to survive a you know, more than 48 hours. Exactly. So, so, I, so from a public health perspective, I think, you know, they're just tools. They're, they're giving the politicians, the tools, the politicians are choosing what tools will get them elected the next round over. Yeah. Right. Cause too many people die. They don't get elected. You kill the economy too much. They don't get elected. Right. Yeah, sure. So it's, 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 they're just point, riding that tightrope. Well, right? not just killing the economy. Don't get elected. You also kill you know there's lots of people dying because of the economy dying yes you yes. know as well as but the I, virus people dying but i think when you're when you're a politician you mm. know like they're just thinking about the next election well yeah that i mean you look at like say bolsonaro over in in um brazil right mm. he was just like no restrictions this mm. is just let's just this is a hoax it. right let's just do it and he's like out pulling out like what 20 percent right now <laughs> he's gone you know he's gone next yeah. election he's done you know and what's happening in, in brazil now exactly is it coming back oh yeah tons of people are dying no, people but is are... it coming back because you don't hear about it too much oh, i guess not it's I don't like know. it's I don't like know. sweden when they oh, first yeah. began you know sweden was the 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 one that no one really wanted to talk about because oh shit they were doing something different to the rest of them which wasn't that different yeah all they were doing was letting the people decide for themselves yeah but but recommending to lock down yeah and they got caught out with by you know fourteen thousand old people dying because they didn't secure the old people's homes enough. It, it just happened yeah. too quickly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know... And just let me go on. Okay, sorry. Now, now they, nobody talks about Sweden because now they've actually got enough vaccines. There's enough of her, her right. immunity. They're out the other side and they're ready to open up. And they're still at 14,000 people dead. So, you know, my point, I'm not sure exactly what my point is, right. but... Uh, uh, there's different ways of going about this. I think there are different ways to go about it. And I, I, you know, like, I think every country should, you know, do whatever they think is right. Mm. But like I Brazil, think, for example, you know. But the data came in. Are right? they, how many people have died there? Well, I mean, the data came in from Sweden. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands. Right. And they did, like, 
they had like double the fatalities. Mm. They had double as, the fatality rate as like Norway. Yeah, which has hardly any population and spread out. You well, know, but, like towns are not towns. The towns in Norway are very small. Similar to Sweden, though, you know, population wise. You no, know, the, and then it's Denmark. Bigger, a lot bigger. Four, I mean, four or five times bigger. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not and talking concentrated. about concentrated. I'm not talking about like total. I'm talking about per capita deaths. Yeah. But well, they, as I said at the beginning, they got caught out because the um they didn't secure the old people's homes right and they were letting people you know they're coming in and out and they should have secured that and they realized it but too late right right that right. was uh that was where they came unstuck it's a mistake yeah. for sure but um i think and it's hard to it's hard yeah. to correlate with those neighbors particularly it should be correlating more with right. southern european countries more uh which have a bit more population right. and a bit more urban density possibly but, but if we're just looking at the frame of like what politicians see, because if we think of like everything, it gets too messy real quick, and you know it's hard to make like an argument for or against. Oh, I don't think there's any for or against. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but anyway. like, but um, <laughs> we all got an opinion, right? So that's yeah, the only no, difference. I get it. Uh, mm. But you know, like if you look at like Brazil, like right, if if you're a politician, right, or you're mm. a government, you think you're trying to do a responsible thing, and you're thinking about like yeah. next election. Yeah, you're thinking like look what happened to them you know what i mean <laughs> but who knows the election hasn't been yet so we'll see when the election comes right and what That's about true. america usa you know yeah don't they, they got, were, uh, not re-elected they are, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the case yeah. um you know, that's a perfect example, because, which is similar to uh, Bolsonaro, Brazil, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. except the Brazil didn't have the vaccines that America had to save the day. Well, yeah, but I mean, apparently they haven't got any yet. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I last heard. Well, that's the weirdest thing about America, right? Like Trump takes all this credit for the vaccines and then he, it, made, the he people, got it going. But no, the CDC and everyone else got it going. Well, I mean, I think the funny the thing is, is that going. Trump supporters are the people not getting vaccinated, right? <laughs> yeah, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, right. So they're like, yeah, you know, like, well, Trump was responsible for the vaccines, Biden didn't get credit. And they're like, mm. well, we're also not getting vaccinated. No, but I think the greatest shame is how it all became left and right side yes, of politics, the yes, whole question. Yes, it got really politicized. No, I So think, quickly. I don't think that, that's... That's the worst thing about it, right? Well, you can't you can't think anything different, or you're going to be in this, you're going to be on this team or that yeah. side. I mean, it's you say anything that shouldn't be politicized, right? I mean, there are things in the world that aren't politicized, like rape. But you know you, what I mean? Like, yeah. there's no party that's like <laughs> for or against rape. It's all wrong, no matter who you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? or murder, or something. right? Yeah, you know, like I mean, yeah, like I like don't think the population died. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think the existence of COVID. But I think be that politicized. that goes deeper too into a uh, question of the media, right? The media in the USA, which became, went into hyperdrive ever since Trump. Put his hand up really terrible that terrible. they um there wasn't anything you could do or say that it'd just be one side or the other this everything he does wrong everything they do right Compa you know with some of the media like all of the media depending on well, the side of the fence there's, there's some definitely some extremely are there, partisan media yeah are there, absolutely are there real middle of the ground media in the u.s i think so yeah Ooh. i mean like the economist um say time magazine you know, well, like, the all the major newspapers, they seem to be. Yeah, I mean, I think the New polarized. York Times will probably like lean a little left. I mean, you have to look a at it. Left. That was, New York Times, Washington Post, ev you know, LA right. Times. Right, right. <laughs> I don't know what the groups are behind them. There's probably a certain group. Well, <laughs> they were right all over it. Right? They were right over him. I couldn't. That's why, you know, I, I'm. You know, I, I don't really care one way or the other, but I didn't like the way they they attacked Trump the whole time from day one. I think justifiably so, though. How? I mean, I think his, his gonna go to was extremely corrupt. I mean, oh, one, he? there's the way he, like, Aren't handled himself. I mean, like, I mean, yeah, they all are, but this was pretty blatant, you know what I mean? When you're hiring your daughter... And your son-in-law nepotism to hire, you know, to like handle, you know, Middle East peace with zero experience. I mean, you're gonna get slammed by the media. I'm well, they sorry. They seem to do pretty well in the Middle East compared to the Did last. They? Oh, they signed some bloody thing. Did they? Yeah, that's right. Didn't Did they? they? They had an agreement between Israel and Saudis, and and the rest of the first agreement they had in 20 years. Not the right agreement. Well, I mean, it was you, an agreement. At least they were talking. If you as soon as at, as soon what? as Biden came back, they were at war again. Now that's a fact. If 
you look at what ha- yeah, if you take the way I'm not going left or right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm just seeing what happened in in the in the news from one point to the other. That's all. Okay. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't And you can you can probably say why this is actually wrong or right, but but uh, or probably wrong. <laughs> right. But what I see is there was an agreement you know, before last year, late last year there was an agreement Right. Uh, the UAE the, signed a normalization and of a relations number of, yeah, with yeah. Israel. Arabs. Right? Arabs. No, no, no. Not Arabs. The UAE. They're Arabs, right? Well, they are Arabs. When you say Arabs, you, you kind of like them. Saudi that got involved. No, no Saudi's did. never Wait, well, check that out. Can, that. can our technician check that? Absolutely. <laughs> check yeah. that page and we'll get back to it. Anyway, you're up in Seattle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, my yeah. son's in Seattle. No, it's, right it's, now. it's great over there. Um, it's super beautiful. The yeah. nightlife scene is... I, I was pandemic, so I was just going to breweries and stuff. But it was already open? That was last year? Breweries August. were, definitely, yeah. How? August last year. I yeah, can't really like picture all... it, but the everybody was going around free. Mass on? Mass on. Sit down, mass off. You're drinking beers. You're... Yeah, I mean, America. Like there's here, no right? temperature testing. You know, they don't do that there. Um, yeah, I mean, we were yeah going to places, restaurants were open at a certain capacity. Um, yeah, I mean, but this is like August last year, before the vaccines, before any of that was happening. Well, there, there must have been places in the U.S. that were that were kind of ex- still exploding with. Well, cases. the issue was the hospitals could still mm. handle the cases in washington specifically okay. so there's not that testing many was people really, or something or? well testing was really easy you could go drive through testing anywhere you wanted you just there were all these like big kind of parks and firefighters would have their little like stations and you mm. could just walk through and get a pcr test and they would just um you just check their website with your info and you'd get your results in 24 hours right. so the testing was really there so people that you know had covid or thought they had COVID, could get testing super easily and know the results within a day. Yeah, do sure. the right thing. Well, um, they, they they kept on you. They, they would say before that the people were uh, highly contagious days before they even true. showed yeah. any symptoms. That's true. I haven't heard that for a while. Is, well, is that still the case? Is that I don't know. I haven't heard it for about a year. I think so, but I mean, if you consider like somebody, I think they're less contagious than when they are actually inflicted with the disease, mm. right? Because that seemed to be the issue. Because right. I don't, I can't imagine anyone. Because I had COVID, and I've had many, you know, right. dengues and everything else, um, and I can't imagine going anywhere when you've when you're sick, you know, with it. So this whole idea of people running around the place, you know, when they got COVID. Uh, maybe the asymptomatic people. Exactly. I think yeah. that's the instance. Or what if you just have a runny nose? Well, that's right. right? I don't go out if I've got a runny nose. I mean, that's, I try that's not the to. right thing to do, but <laughs> <laughs> that's not everyone. <laughs> but yeah, what if you just have like a little bit of a, you know, a little thing, a little sore throat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, but my, I've you got to be, got a, you know, right? I have a feeling, maybe it's not right. It's totally, you know wrong uh but you know this thing is going to go through the population in the world uh, you know eventually and the quicker everyone gets it the better you know event you know not clogging up the hospitals right. with, with this but you know staying at home you know right. f- i don't know figuring out some way to handle these people well kind of like an interesting um thing i learned while i was in seattle was mm-hmm. my cousin was a traveling nurse and his specialty was icus and um so he was in Seattle and, you know, like it wasn't ever that bad. It was just like, whatever, you know, he's making normal nurse money over there. But after I'd left Seattle, he had, it had gotten so bad in Texas and the Southern States. Mm. And because he's a traveling nurse, he's kind of like this free agent nurse that just goes, goes to places to where, where he's oh. needed. Right. Mm. And the demand for his specialty ICU was so high that he was making thirty thousand dollars for a two week stint at a hospital. Mm, nice. <laughs> Literally, because they were just so overwhelmed and so packed that these hospitals went into like a full blown bidding war. Mm, just, just to get the, the just, people just on to board. Get people on board, yeah. And the oxygen. Oxygen, oxygen was right? never an issue in the states, mm. but he, he was like, it was, he said it was like crazy. He said like, you know, the amount of people that were just so out of it mm. that they'd literally 
pull their intubators out of their fucking throats, you know, Just and you'd have to fight them. Enough of this shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then they would die. They would mm-hmm. die in minutes. He said, like, if you didn't catch them in time, they would just die. They're so out of it. They're just trying to pull their shit out all the time. He said it was crazy. And how old were they? How old are they? I, I don't know. 15 years old? I don't really ask. I'm, yeah. yeah. Probably old, I'd imagine. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But, you know, the old people are people, too. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, no, of course they are. But, I, you know, there's many cases of old people being stuck in these homes where they're fed up. They're quite right. happy to knock off, you know, yeah. knock off. That's true. You know, so, you know, my my own family, my mother, she was right. quite happy to get COVID. <laughs> get, get, no, no, oh. she'd already gone. But, oh, okay. you know, she had a long illness. So yeah. she was, you know, she would have been quite happy to get out, get out of the place, uh, you know, a couple of years before she Oh, totally. eventually did because totally. there's zero life you know there is right life. so but nobody wants to talk about that well know. i mean i think in america you have like the right to die right now right oh do they have euthanasia yeah mm. so i mean if you want out you can get out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want out if you want out you just go straight into the pandemic with your, right, your mouth yeah. open and ready to go pretty sure you score a little fentanyl and uh you know just party it out <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> okay, so you left Seattle. What happened next? Where'd you go? Oh, man. I went, I drove through Idaho and Montana. That's and through Wyoming. the Midwest, right? Uh, no, it's still like north. Mm. It's like, you know, north and you're going directly east. Mm. And, uh, Straight across. Yeah, and I just I just spent a lot of time in Yellowstone. You know, saw like bears and um, wolves yeah, hunting and stuff. Or you can't hunt out there. Did you hunt anywhere? No, I didn't have no. a gun. Which um, you had a gun with you? I did not. Uh, why which, not? you know, I I asked myself that every night. I would camp out because there'd be signs all over the place: bears, bears, mm. us bear sighting this location one day ago. Hang up your food. Federal crime not to hang out, hang up your food. You know, you'd have to like secure your food up trees and stuff. Mm. Well, they'll just come into your tent and grab it. I mean, that's the fear, right? Mm. I mean, they're really kind of stressing it to you like there are fucking bears here and you better watch out <laughs> you're better off being in a camper van <laughs> right oh i was just thinking the whole time or have a gun you know yeah. that bear spray but um the whole did you, I, did you ever see one at night did everyone come to visit or not dude thank god no mm. thank god no i mean that i was um i mean between like the cold and the potential for bears it you know it was a little uncomfortable. Uh, let's tell you, it was a fun trip, but I'm not doing it anytime soon. Yeah, I'm not so doing how far again. across did you go? Uh, like Yellowstone, it's a big park. Yeah, yeah. So how long did you stay there? Oh, I stayed there for like, oh, like 10 days or something like that. Wow. So it's a lot of a lot of wilderness you were going through. Yeah, yeah. No, it was snowing up there. Oh. And uh, I'd wake up and knock snow off my tent. And um, that was fucking cold and you know there are some nights like you know you really just can't get warm and yeah it's rough yeah. and there are other people out there camping or something it was just you no no there are other people it's a campsite and uh you know some campsites they're just full of families and, what time of year is this oh man this is like end of september right yeah. so people are going back to school or something or whatever back to work so it starts to thin out a bit no, it was full because mm. uh, during the pandemic, they thought they were going to be closed and then um, they were open. So they weren't prepared for this influx. So they mm. closed something like half the campgrounds. So what ended up happening was oh, right. the camping so it was concentrated. Spot, yeah. Yeah. So these campsites were like super coveted. Like mm. you got one, you got one. You mm. stayed in your campsite because people would really roll up all the time and be like, Sniffing around for a site. Yeah, I was like, hey, is there a site open? <laughs> you know, there'd be a big sign that says no sites open. But, yeah, yeah. you know, people would come all and what, day. what would happen to them? they just keep on driving around until they find something. Yeah. I mean, I got really lucky. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I got well, it's only lots. one, right? Only you. So you fit in kind of it's a in site a crevice just, or something. Oh, uh, site's just a site, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what are you doing around there for 10 days? Just walking, just hiking? hiking. Yeah, mm-hmm. doing a lot of hiking. Uh, yeah. So it's a pretty healthy lifestyle, right? Yeah, it was really nice. I mean, met some friends. Like, mm. the the campsite I ended up in called Pebble Creek. It was, like, a real cool one. Like, everyone was, like, a traveler, you know? Mm. And, you know, the host was really cool. He, like, knew everyone's names. And, you know, it's kind of those campsites where you'd all 
kind of link up at the end of the day and drink together and you know hang out and they're all kind of young people or something no, there were a lot of super old people, oh, really? but they were just cool. <laughs> Escaping you know I mean? those hospitals. But... Yeah, everyone's just cool. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah. chill. And but um, there must be sort of young people traveling around too, right? And backpacking or something. I don't know. I, you know, I honestly I do. didn't see too many. No, really. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you see big groups of them, but not but the freewheeling solo traveler. I think it was just getting too cold there at that mm. point. You know. I mean, they're freewheeling solo travelers, but they were like mostly a little mm. bit older. Mm. Yeah, kind of a bit sort of lost out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> in mean, the wrong place at the wrong time. So, you, did you go straight across to New York or something, or where did you where did you swing south? Well, you know, a friend of mine uh, said, "Come work at my farm." And so uh, I was like, cool, I'll do that. And I drove through Idaho and Nevada, camped all along the way. Mm. Was actually just trying to, like, be a little quick with it. But camped in some super beautiful places. Nevada is uh, Las Vegas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had to drive through Vegas because that's right. the southern part. And I was mm. more in the northern just part. Because it's pretty flat, isn't it? I, I imagine it's, it's like... It's mountainous. It's really oh, mountainous. North is... Desert, okay. desert, and mountainous. Right. Oh, it's weird. It's like desert, and then all these mountains, and then desert, and then all these mountains, and then flat, 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 and then all of a sudden mountains. It's like prairie land, or is it barren? Sand, barren, barren mm, land. Like yeah. desert. Desert, just tumbleweeds. and oh, sure. I mean, oh, there's some like well. shrubbery, I guess, but it's it, pretty featureless. There's a lot of that, isn't there, I guess? Or in the Midwest, it's kind of a bit more farming land. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. the Great Plains. But yeah, yeah. Nevada is like just desert, really. Desert and mountain desert, and there's not a lot of trees, let's put it that way. So after that, you're heading to California. Yeah, yeah, I went to California. Grass Valley. No. California. No. I stayed in Grass Valley for a week or two. Oh, really? You know Grass Valley? I do know Grass Valley. <laughs> it's famous for... Not so, grass. Well, it is famous for famous grass. For? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of grass when I was there. Yeah. I, I had a friend, you know, that was traveling around Europe with, and he, he was there. He was from there. So I spent a couple of weeks, and yeah, it was just like, right, like somewhere in the southwest of Australia. It's you know, very agricultural. Yeah, very well, like wood. You know, milling. Or, yeah, you know, a lot of very meth. similar, very similar to the southwest yeah. uh, Margaret River and a lot of meth. Of a lot of meth out there. I realized meth. Yeah, a lot of meth. A lot what of are they doing. Really? Yeah, man. A lot They're of just like up. junky ass hobos, you know. Hillbillies. I mean, maybe they started off their life as hillbillies, and they just turned into like this mutant form, you know, <laughs> roaming the desert with like <laughs> with guns, hubcats and chains, and you know, just carrying whatever. Picking up hitchhikers. Yeah, no, there it's it was it was post apocalyptic in that? some places. Yeah, it's probably you know. in Australia they do that. Yeah, mm. and yeah, yeah, I had imagined like you know having conversations with these people, and um, nah, nah, I didn't want anything to do with you. But you're on a motorbike, right? So you're just sort of gunning, gunning through town. Gunning, you have to stop, and you know. Yeah, yeah, you stop at a fast get a food sandwich place. Or something. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and you can't eat in the restaurant because of COVID oh, or shit. whatever. So you're so like you're not really bumping up against people. You're in the parking lot. Yeah, you know, you're sitting in the parking lot next to a probably, few guys. Probably not the ideal time to be traveling at all during the pandemic if you want to meet people. If you want to be on your own, sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I, d- I didn't really know what I wanted. I just was you you know, really nilly. I mean, I mm. honestly decided to do this motorcycle trip probably like a week before yeah. leaving yeah. Bali. So it's just like, just whatever. get out of there and do it. Yeah, I was just driving my bike to Uber. I'm like, man, I'm really miss driving a bike. And, you know, like, you know, the <laughs> light bulb kind of like pops up over your head. You're like, how many kilometers do you do in total? I did 6,000 miles. Wow. Yeah. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Okay. So you went to California? Yep. You 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 did some agricultural work or something? Yeah, then you know I I just decided to go back to uh to Dallas and see my dad and you know like do Christmas and New Year's with him and uh, and that's how I got stuck. You okay. know, you know, like I was stuck. I was gonna just fly back to Bali, you know, get my B one one, you know, just get a visa, get in, and then boom 
closing all applications, right? Oh, uh, back then. You were trying to get back here. Yeah. And you got stuck over there. Yeah, yeah. All oh, right. Yeah, because they closed it, what, like after New Year's January, or something? Right? Yeah. yeah. And what's crazy is I already had a Kitas approved, and I was just kind of, you know, my mom just was kind of dragging her feet to pay for it. Mm. And uh, she's going to pay for it, I guess, after New Year's. And that's when they Everything was going to be okay, but <laughs> yeah. it didn't figure out that way. Right, yeah. I mean, it was already approved. All you had to do was pay for it, yeah. Shit. So, uh, yeah, I was stuck in, in the States. And there was that crazy winter storm. Did you hear about that? Mm -hmm. In Texas? Yeah. Yeah, it was oh, closed down. Everybody dying or something, right? Yeah, yeah, a few people died. Um was crazy was it was snowing and we knew it was going to be cold i was like okay it's gonna be cold whatever and then you know went to bed woke up the next morning got out like around noonish just see the snow and i go to my dad's backyard and it's frozen solid like you could walk on it it was the snow what do you mean ice mm. just the whole thing turned to ice well not the whole thing but like enough of it to where you could walk on the mm. pool mm. so the day before is liquid. Sure. And overnight. That's quick. It was so cold. <laughs> it was wild. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, no way. How does that even happen? And But there must be loads of snow. Was it dropping snow at that time? Uh, yeah, there was a fair amount of snow. Mm -hmm. I mean, there wasn't a ton of snow, but yeah. it was just it was just cold. You know, it was just cold, cold, cold. And But uh, it wasn't to the point of, you know, when... You know that you have to dig out the windows of the the house. Or the no, 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 no. There just, wasn't there wasn't a lot of snow fall. I mean, there's snow falling, but it mm. wasn't like yeah. We're still talking about Texas or, or whatever. Yeah. But it was <laughs> cold. That's mm. the temperature really went down like by a lot. Right. And um, and then it got so cold that the nuclear power plants had to shut down mm. because their cooling liquid or whatever froze. So they all shut down. So you lost all that power. Mm. And then. Because all the um, the the gas fired natural gas power plants get their gas piped in, mm. all those, those pipes all froze. So then, like the power so went no out. Power. So you had no heating, and uh, you were just Shit. like and in the dark, long? cold. Uh, like three or four days for mm. us. It was different for everyone. Fine. That's that's a long time to be freezing cold. Yeah, we had day and night. We had firewood. We were we were lucky. My uncle had just cut down a tree in his mm -hmm. backyard, so mm. we had firewood. Mm. Um, but there wouldn't be that many fireplaces, right? <laughs> There's just they one. Build fireplaces, it's just one in, in houses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, down that way. Yeah, yeah, they do. They oh, do. so yeah, it gets yeah. cold in winter. Yeah, I mean, it mm. snows like probably like twice. Because they're not year. allowed. They're not allowed. I don't think you're allowed to have fires in houses anymore in australia oh really yeah like Is it like the you know, bushfire thing or environmental thing you know oh, that's people burning shit everywhere oh really oh. Mm. yeah well my dad had this like neighbor app have you heard of it what's that it just basically you can like shout out things but only within a radius of your neighborhood so people like they're like hey man like what do i do for a plumber and then someone else okay. in your neighborhood that's could handy. be like it's handy mm. but the neighbor app was going off it was mm. like Everyone's hey, oh, I got this special needs kid. He like you know he eats off a of feeding tube or whatever that needs to have power. Mm. So I have a generator. Hey, you know I live in a house with like three old people and mm. four toddlers. Can I get some and it's firewood? Freezing cold. Yeah, you know it was it was kind of like a lot of that. So there's a bit of panic. Yeah, or, people just weren't prepared. And you the know? and the government, what were they doing about it? Uh, I mean, not a lot. Yeah, I mean, you know, you get on the internet and you're just like, when's my power gonna turn on? And you're like, as soon as we can get it on, <laughs> you're just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're all just blaming each other. Yeah, you're just like, great. Okay. I'm just gonna like cook everything on the grill. <laughs> so, did you get a job down there or something in, in Texas while you're there? Oh, yeah, I had a couple of jobs. Mm. Um, I was like scuba diving for. Or sunken boats. Hmm. So what would happen is I had a buddy in college, um, and he became GM of this marina, and so I I'd hung out at the marina a lot because I actually used to work there in college, and um, it was fun. You know, we'd wake surf and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it sounds fun. And uh, he lost an outboard testing a boat like in the lake, and I was like, we can find it. We can mm. totally find it. He's like, no way, dude. How like, deep's the lake? Uh, not too deep. It was like forty foot or whatever. Mm. I was like, 
we have a bass boat. We have sonar on the bass boat. We have side scan sonar. We have like bottom sounding sonar and we have a live scope that like it's a sonar that you can like kind of manipulate, move around. And we fish together, so mm-hmm. like, you know, I kinda know how the sonar works. I'm like, we could totally find this outboard. He's like, Yeah, right, dude. We're never gonna find it. And we end up finding it. Mm. And then he's all like, Well, you're pretty good <laughs> at diving, so you know, like I got all these I sunk- gotta jump. <laughs> yeah, I got all these sunken boats uh-huh. in the slips. Mm. Cause during the big freeze, um the piping would break on the boats and then, you know, water would rush in and the little bilge pump would burn out just trying to fight the flood. That'd be sinking all over the place. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, he was like, let's get these boats out. So we got these, like, 2,000-pound lift bags, and, you know, I'd scuba dive down and, like, zero visibility. Mm. Like, you'd close your eyes, and you open your eyes, and it'd be, like, no difference. <laughs> you just <laughs> feel it around, try not to get fish hooked, you know, because <laughs> people like to fish off, you know, like those little sunken boats. Clank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Sketchy. It was not fun. It was not fun. And they're paying you pretty good for that. Yeah, they were paying me like a thousand bucks a project. Yeah. Oh. And some projects were like you know, a day and some would take mm. like two or three. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it was great. And then um, eventually, well, it's a long, you only just came back, right? A few weeks ago. So, yeah. So that's uh, eight months ago. So what was going on since then? What happened? What oh. happened with the pandemic in the U.S.? Oh, man. Well, everyone got vaccinated, man. You know, at first, um, you know, I get to America and I got some old relatives, you know, so that's that's the fear. They got vaccinated. Well, they, they were first to get vaccinated. But before mm. the vaccine, it, mm. you know, like they their were, kids were like, hey, man, vulnerable. who you been hanging out with? You know, like flew in. They were like, bro, mm. don't even come to the house. Sure. Like, Especially from Indonesia or wherever the hell you came from. Well, I mean, on the like road, baby, you know, yeah, yeah. but, you know, anytime that you're on the plane, that's 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 the big concern, right? Yeah, yeah. So you land, and they're like, "Man, you're sorry, you can't come oh, to the house so for a couple you got, weeks." Wait a minute, you got rid of the motorbike? I shipped it to, um, I shipped it to Texas from California. It was like five hundred bucks or oh, something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so after the the agriculture job, you just shipped it, went straight, straight to flew Texas. down. It's too cold to ride. I thought yeah. about it. It's too cold. Mm. Yeah. It's the middle of, well, it's after Christmas, right? Well, it's like right before. Oh, Christmas. before Christmas. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. So, you know, Christmas was like, had to wear a mask, you know, it was, it was like, you know, the fear was there and, you know, my, my ground, my uncle ended up getting COVID actually. And, How'd he go? Uh, he went all right. Yeah. And then like, I had like my cousin's grandma ended up getting COVID. She died. So mm. that was like fresh in people's minds, you know, so everyone was like a little cautious. Mm. And then, you know, the vaccines came out, everyone got vaccinated in the family and it just was like life like that. normal and then and yeah now the delta's going through it again right so well, are they are they getting hit by it down there you know i mean all i can really base it on is the news right now because yeah. i've been gone for like three weeks but while i was there delta was around but, i don't know it's prevalent mm-hmm. but everything was 100 percent open yeah yeah nightclubs just bars normal. Restaurants full capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, the masks, you don't have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. Those were the rules. So you go to the supermarket, maybe like 20% of people were wearing masks. I ever saw this one great sign. Were you wearing one? Uh, sometimes, yeah, just respect. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, I, was, I don't mind the mask. You know? Yeah, I don't mind it either. It kind of, it kind of, uh, makes uh, social interaction kind of easier all you've got your your eyes right yeah you don't have to smile you don't, you don't even have to shave you know it's kind of... what i realize is just like how bad my jokes are because um when you don't you don't get, I've to, smile. You don't get to smile afterwards you know they're like the fuck are you talking about dude <laughs> who's this weirdo yeah stay right. behind your mask weirdo. yeah jeez. but people got aggro about the mask or something in the states or, uh, or in the know, southern states yeah yeah people were kind of like over it but you know the people i were hang out with were pretty considerate like i mean you know i don't i don't really hang out i hang out with some rednecks and they were mm. kind of like f- you know fuck these masks or whatever <laughs> everyone everyone complied you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah sure um, I, I don't find them, you know even just riding a motorbike normally i wouldn't mind just using them forever right you know 
it uh, helps with the pollution. That's true. I mean, I mean, over here, all these people wearing masks a lot. Mm. Over there, no one was wearing masks. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, ever. Yeah. <laughs> since since 1929. Right. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I did have Ironic. one friend that was, like, absolutely not going to get vaccinated. And I was like, mm. why? And he's, like, Navajo Indian. So he's like, I don't trust the white man. And I was like, can't argue with that. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah, I don't know. Because I've got these antibodies anyway from the time right. I had it. And I had the test. I don't know if you followed my my, right, right. my, uh, my Facebook post about all that and the amount of interaction. And it's still going on today. Yeah. Because there's nothing clear. There's nothing really clear. I've, I've Obviously, I've followed the, yeah. all the information, looked all over for the information. I don't think I don't think the science is there yet, man. No, it's I like they because they don't re- they say basically the same thing. Yeah, uh, but at the end, you know, the, the vaccine and the antibodies, natural antibodies, they don't really know. Right. <laughs> That's what they say. But at the end, they say, yeah, but you should get vaccinated because you know whatever. Just get it. Yeah. I mean, no, I, but mean, I don't because you see yeah. other reports where people who have had quite a, a load of antibodies, right? They get really quite sick from the vaccine. Yeah, they do. So yeah, you're gonna. Get why sick. am I gonna do that? Uh, to afford you more protection later. Well, nobody can tell you how much protection you've got to have. So, you know, I, I, I prefer to believe yeah. in my own immune system yeah. and I think, I have think, a go. I think you could be right. Um, but th- just the way I think about it is... Um, it doesn't hurt. Well, you know, you're just you're just adding seatbelts on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, sure, you could die in a car crash wearing your seatbelt <laughs> with a lot of seatbelts on. Well, but can, the chances are a little bit lower, right? And well, I think I think the more you train up your immune system, the more you poke it. And that's that's what the um, that's what you hear a lot of. You don't hear right. a lot about trying to build up your own immunity, your own your own uh, health. You know, I, th- I think that's I think your, that's important your personal too. Personal, I think that immunity. You know, immune system. I think I think that's I think they're both important. And I right? think the pandemic. Uh, has it, it? It's because everything's locked down and everyone's slower and they're right. not going out and you're late and you know you're, you're more healthy anyway. Right. So I think the population has generally become healthier and your immune system becomes better. Right. For that reason. I think yes, I think that's true. I, I think about it like this: like if your immune system is like a fighter jet, you need like a really good radar to detect your enemy and really mm. good missiles to shoot them down. And I think about like your immune system is like your antibodies are your missiles and the vaccine is like your radar system. Right. Mm. Oh, the it just helps. It could to, help. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. It you could know? help. And yeah, you're going to get sick, but I've had but, a, you know, I think, it, I think it's on a case by case situation too. I, I think so. And too. country, country, yeah, you know, yeah, region, 100%. regional and here in, indonesia and living here many years your your body has had to fight a lot of a lot stuff a lot. you know no doubt about and it the stuff that people in northern europe and and, right. and the united states would never have come across right so you can imagine how they they do get hit right. for six from it. i'm saying that too this delta seems to be going quite rampant through java but on the other hand you know out of a country of 280 million you know 70 or 80 thousand people is not a huge number so we know obviously we haven't come right. to the end of it yet, but over a year and a half, it's not a huge number that have died on in this country. Right, right, right. And there's all sorts of theories as why that might be, but uh, and I've and I've got friends, very close friends in Central Java, and a month ago when they when they brought in this latest restrictions, right, uh, she was saying how how bad it was over there, and how many how every day you'd hear about. Uh, you know, multiple people dying all all around them, and her right. husband was is quite uh, involved in the local village setup. So, so he would hear every day more and more people dying, and she was calling me, "Oh, geez, this is out of control." And even equating it to, uh, you know, like the first bomb, you know, when everything was just kind of everyone's blitzed, and all you saw on the road was the police sort of drive right. around slowly, and all you know, it's just like dark, and everyone's dying. And that's the, that's what she was saying or describing it as. But but then I was talking to her, well, over the last week, and it's completely different again now. You know, you don't hear about anyone dying. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of passed through. Right. So, you know, this thing will pass, you know, no matter how. And there's nobody yeah. got a vaccine over there. You know, it's like vaccines right. in central Java, like, pff, 
you know, <laughs> right, maybe five percent. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know? So that, I think you know when there's there's lots of science, there's lots of theories, and lots of everything, but on a case by case situation. That's true. You know? But also, you know, like there, that's two different lenses, right? I mean, there's the individual lens, and there's like a public health lens, right? And mm. then when you're dealing with public health, you're trying to think of policy, right? Well, that's right. right. No, but I don't. I I'm not doubting that in the northern countries, you know, which don't have the same right. contact with these tropical diseases and you know the you know the viruses. And well, it's quite bad in India, and I I, I think of India as pretty. Disease-y how many how many people place. live in how many people live in India? One point two billion. Yes. Or something. But right. So, f- the, you know, and I you know I follow the you know right. me I'm all over the media and. When they're talking about 3,000 people dying in a day, it's like, yeah, okay. So I check back and right. how many people are dying a day in India. And it's like, oh, shit, there's 26,000 people die a day in fucking India. Right. Um, but then no, one talk to, no one's talking about that. But, you know, are okay. the rates high, though? You know what I mean? Yeah, but like... in the big scale of things, you know, how many people died there? And it's all over. You know, oh, yeah. Delta's over. It's moved on. Maybe somebody else will come right, along. Right. But it's only X amount, hundreds of thousands out of. 1.2 billion. So it's not like 1% of their population? Know, yeah, it's similar to anywhere else, probably. Yeah. Um, probably more in the US, obviously. But uh, yeah, yeah. But obviously, they've, they've started to vaccine more over there, too. Right. So Anyway, this thing will pass. Right. But I guess, there, I mean, there's two lenses to thinking of that, too, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're either of the lens where, like, and this is just extremes, right? Where, like, you know, like, people are going to die. Who cares? Mm. Um if a bunch of people die, you know, like whatever. They weren't supposed to die. It's the economy, you know, <laughs> like we can't stop yeah. living our lives. And then there's the other ones, the other side of the extreme. It's like, well, one person dying is too many, right? Yeah, sure. And, you know, that's somebody's grandparent or mother or whatever. Absolutely. You know? And that's tragic. And uh, we should absolutely, absolutely prevent every single one of them. And, you know, like... <laughs> And people are just like somewhere in that spectrum, you know. They they exist in different <laughs> that, areas of the spectrum. You know what I mean? Like that's that's kind of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And some sure. people are more towards, you know, like one life is too many, and some people are like, "Fuck it, they had it coming." <laughs> you know? well, the fuck should have had a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> Do uh, bad, suckers. Yeah, well, <laughs> Not me. I tell you what, yeah. but the big bad above points. <laughs> <laughs> points down <laughs> you gotta duck yeah yeah you said um, not today motherfucker <laughs> not today <laughs> but anyway i'm sure we'll get all over this and and you know eventually and and you know like the ppkm we're having at the moment in in this town which started off pretty serious but now it seems to be very flexible yeah yeah you know like yeah you know they're like, just trying to keep people at home a little bit I mean, you you lock them down for too long, people stop complying, right? Mm. From what I mean, if you're, I mean, if I'm government, that's what I'm thinking about, right? I'm like, mm. you don't lock them down too hard, they're gonna stop complying, and then you're kind of like, you kind of screwed yourself over as a government. I mean, you know, if you do too little, you know, two people will die. People are pissed off. Well, they say they've got to be seen to be doing something at least, right? And it is, it is, you yeah. know, because yeah. I don't, I don't really follow exactly how. Like nightclubs, for example. Nightclubs, close all the nightclubs, you know. So obviously, the, you know, the 5,000 people that might be in a nightclub, right. probably 1,000 recently if it was all open. Because only these places fit like 200, 300, 300 people. It's not, you know, it's not like <laughs> like even 1% of the population that's in, in these nightclubs. But, okay, we're going to close them down and that's what we're going to do. Okay, meanwhile... You've got the Passa down the road here, open, right. all day long, packed to the gills. No one's protocol or anyone. See, see, but see, you know. you're thinking in binary. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're, think, you're thinking binary terms now, right? Yeah. You're thinking on and off. It's it's a numerical term. We can't shut down the Passa. That's right. But we can shut down the night. That's right. It's too easy. And, you know, we're going to chip away, you know, at least a little bit off that eight, you know, by <laughs> cutting off the nightclub. So let's do it. And how many? Because <laughs> they're all young. And they, you know, they might okay, they might go home to their parents, but they haven't got parents. The majority of people in those nightclubs are either bullet, 
and they've got no parents here. Yeah, but or the, these young kids from Jakarta are all hanging out in this villa. Yeah, no, but they can, it's, they it's, can, I, it's, I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, but they could chip away. And that's why yeah. people do not trust the government, because it's yeah, ridiculous. Or they could chip away a little bit off that number with like pretty much zero political consequences, right? And the chip, like, a, the chip away would be... Next bit of school. Zero. Bit of school. Oh, it's like the eight day quarantine, right? I mean it's like it's already here. It's already wild here. You know what I mean? Like what's the point of the eight day quarantine? Mm. There's just literally mm. zero sympathy. <laughs> and I've heard for, for I've heard you just sort of yeah. walk out of the hotel anyway and go down this road and buy a packet of cigarettes. That's what I heard. Oh no, not at not, no, not, well, not, I mean, not at my place. There's a guy on the hallway. Um and they were pretty twenty four seven. 24 7 they were no, they were no like strict well i mean what i heard was like you know i mean you can do what fuck you want but you're gonna just reset your court back to eight fucking oh, right. days yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i was like all right but if he grabs your bag and walked out would somebody say something oh i, I didn't chase you <laughs> i was i was quite happy at my my quarantine okay yeah I how was, was it oh it was all right you know i just had weights brought in from the gym so mm. i was just That's fucking yeah. yeah i was just working out like Four workouts a day, you know, and having a few books or something. Yeah, I read a little bit. You know, I took a lot of baths, a lot of bubble baths. That's luxurious. I mean, what else are you gonna fucking do, Stu? But did someone? <laughs> <laughs> did, did the maid come in and make the bubble bath for you? Yeah, <laughs> or you did it yourself? I wish. It's not <laughs> a soapy fucking massage, Stu. It's it's a it's a quarantine hotel. It's Jakarta, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I hear that Jakarta is totally boring nowadays, but uh, I, I could imagine, know. yeah. You know. No, it's well, you know, I got there. Mm. There were blue skies, so yeah. first like, time ever. Yeah, and it was cold. It was really, it was cold. It was like I had a little thermometer that I brought, you know, from my road trip. I had it there. How how, how many degrees? I was had the window open. My AC was off. It was like probably seven in the evening. No it way. Twenty one. Oh. It's twenty one, oh, dude. Morning. Not seven o'clock. Not seven degrees. Yeah, it's twenty one. Yeah, unheard of. I was shocked. I had to like put on like freaking sweatpants and stuff. I was like, "What the?" Is that because of the popular uh, popular the pollution lifts? And, uh, or something? I, I I honestly what I have to, no uh, idea. Last week, uh, this how long have you been back? A month. <sighs> yeah, I got in on like the tenth, I think. Okay. So, yeah, a little less than that. Mm. And then I did eight days of quarantine, got out, like, what, the 18th, mm. 17th, something like that. So how about um, the future? Dude, how's, I have no idea, man. How's the future I have life? no idea what I'm going to do in mm. the future. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's not no a great idea. place to... Well, it is a great place to be at any time, you know, if you've got things going on or not, but... It's not cheap. It's not, you, know, you need money coming in, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I kind of had this idea to, um, you know, so you have like all this COVID information, right? And it's kind of like all over the place. And mm. there's a great Facebook group that, you know, that Jackie Pomeroy group oh, yeah. is like there. And that's really great. And Well, it's not really a group. She just does it all herself. Yeah, it's great mm. what she does. And she's really good at collating she's, stuff. She's and a, quite a statistician or... Yeah, she knows how to pull mm. it together. Um, and then there's um, there's that Bali Law and Regulations group, which is oh, interesting. Yeah. And, you know, you got all, all these government sites and, you know. So you want to pull all that together? Yeah, I was thinking about just pulling all that together. And but into it, a Facebook? No, into like a website. Oh, okay. Yeah, and make it really comprehensive. And it's, just, hard to, it's hard to imagine ever making any money out of anything anymore. I mean, you know. With even, media, anyway. You know, even just like a service in my free time, you know what I mean? I think <laughs> I'm talking about surviving here. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, I did well in agriculture, so Okay. So you still got some cash yeah holding you over. Yeah, and you know Yeah, so I, I got that and you know, just as a public service, I think mm. I'm just gonna try to keep you involved in media, you mean Yeah, collate it, put it in one spot and kinda like you know, quarantine hotels. What's the deal with that? I had no idea how to pick one. Mm. Is my window open? Do mm. I have a balcony? There's like 60 What's hotels. Mm. What's on offer? What's the best deal? There's what no am website? I... No, there's like, a, there's like a dock. I've got a computer, man. Let's do it. Yeah, right? Or like <laughs> where to get a PCR test, right? Like yeah. I need a PCR test. I got to fly the next day. Where do I get one? 
you're literally spending hours calling mm. around places, mm. right? There's there's nothing isn't there it, for isn't you. Isn't it on Chenggu Group? Isn't Chenggu Community? No, mm. no. Like if you just needed to find a spot, yeah. You know, if you just needed all your options like in front of your face. I think this Bali dot com maybe does. Uh, I don't know how accurate it is. Yeah. Point is, it's up to all over the place, yeah. right? I haven't checked, so I'm yeah. not sure. Bring in the one spot. Mm. You know, people, what about writing stories and promoting things and stuff like that? Do you think there's a feature in that? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, to me, I just want to do this as like a public service. You know what I mean? Like mm. coming here, I was like kind of like lost with a couple of documents. Things changed overnight. Mm. You know, I'm not getting like a text alert from anyone. Mm. Um, my buddy had to fly out the next day. He was looking for a PCR test. We were calling around for hours trying to get him like an eight hour PCR test. Hard to find. Right. I had a friend flying out. She didn't know whether she had the right docs or not. You know, there's there's a lot of confusion and these are like not, you know, some German backpacker tourists that know nothing about nothing. These are mm. like people that live here mm. that are be confused. Mm. And I think um, I think there's value. I think the like, the only thing that's talking about that is that uh, law and order or whatever they call it, law in Indonesia. All that information right. seems to be on it. But then you're then you're scrolling through yeah, like trying to find comments stuff. and. But that's know, always those. the problem with social media, isn't it? It doesn't. It's not a, like a one stop spot you can exactly. find things. Collate it, put it together, keep it super neat, you mm. know. And but what about what about media business? Because we used to. We used to be involved. We used to write these stories and everything, and you know, correlate information. And yeah, where people could get information, what they're looking for. I um, think. I think. Yeah. I mean, is there a know, future? Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, like you know, there's still plenty of media in the states when things are open and people have budget for it. Print media or yeah, online everything. Right. Mm. I still get my Weekender magazine every Sunday. That's promoting stuff. That's like but full it's of getting ads. Thin, right? Or is it no? I mean, I don't know. I you know I haven't, I haven't spent a lot of time in America, so I don't I don't I know what you, it looks like yearly. I but I bet I bet it's thinner, but it exists. You know what I mean? And when places are open and places are making money mm. and they have you know they're putting five percent of their profits in marketing or whatever it is they're doing. Mm. I mean, they got to spend it somewhere, right? And uh, I mean, I guess so. Yeah. But all these influencers, right? I mean, you know, you know, you see all these people. They basically got big boobs and and I, whatever. I think one hundred percent they're chipping away at it. There's no doubt about that. But yeah, I don't. I don't think print media is quite gone dead yet. It's one hundred percent dead in Bali right now because oh, well, totally. There's the, nothing to talk about. Yeah, you know, the <laughs> traditional advertisers like aren't there, right? Yeah, no yeah. one's making money. Right? But it seems like the whole system's changing where people don't spend any money on promotion anymore. Right, and people don't expect to believe the bullshit they've seen in magazines anymore. So everything has become a lot more um, binary, is it? Where you got a question, you get an answer. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Like you're talking about with the information. Right, there's nothing fluffy anymore. Well, I mean, I think I think that kind of speaks to the way um, Bali media operated, right? Like mm. for a lot of times, the feeling was like the magazine's responsibility was to the advertiser and not to the um to the reader to the reader and that's just how like you know things shook shook out right it was like yeah. very well, you had to. Yeah, yeah no one's no one's like spending any money to buy a magazine to know what's up you know what i mean so that's <laughs> so, what it, so that's what yeah. kind of happened and i yeah, think yeah. i think that just that business model just became a casualty of its own success right mm. and um especially when people were coming along and uh, but no, okay. The initially when right. when people mm. online came along and reviews and stuff were like real and right. real people doing real reviews and they're talking stuff. But it seemed to get corrupted along the way too. Well, I think I think there's also like uh, like a, there's a more general distrust of the media now, right? Mm. So I think you know people that hate. CNN and the BBC, yeah, yeah. you know, sided up again. Well, I mean, mm. you, you, or, or all of them, yeah, yeah, sure. well, like right. I mean, I think, I think traditional media is kind of viewed with a little bit of suspicion these days as well. So versus anything on the internet is like 
definitely true you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah like some right chick you know one z in followers you know with big boobs yeah gonna be directing you to the right place some fucking blog post you know for some <laughs> bogan that's never been here you know yeah. what i mean like you know yeah. like so i think i think that's a shift and that's a cultural shift that mm. hasn't only affected hard news that's literally affected all traditional media right so where do you get your news from now oh man i get it. i get it from weird places okay i get it from um foreign policy magazine i love a lot i mean they're like a hundred bucks a year to subscribe foreign to policy you. they send out an email right on saturdays is that the same foreign policy i, I think they do yeah um, i mean i'm sure they have a newsletter but i'm, well, I'm just no, on it's their a foreign, site. forum foreign policy forum i think it's called. oh maybe i do get it their email yeah. fp it's, it's just a big magazine and it's just really mm. well written i'm like I'm a super foreign sure. policy wonk. The mm. Diplomat, another mm. great one. Um, the Economist, amazing journalism. So what do you? I do. I do the AP. Yeah, yeah. AP mobile yeah, app. Mm. I like that. That's just like my you know hard news day to day. Um, you know, like I mean, I still like New York Times and stuff like that. And how how and do you how do you find the planet? You know, how how do you think we're going at the moment compared to say? before pandemic do you think it's going to make a, some kind of big shift and it's going to change it all well you know i don't i don't because i'm so I'm such a non-binary person I don't, I don't think of things as like big cataclysmic changes mm. i think of things either eroding something or adding to something and i think yeah i think the distrust in government and just humanity's general inability to unite around problems and fix problems because of the fragmentation of our media and our ideas is going to be a major major problem coming forward the polarization of uh thought right it's not even two sides anymore it's literally know. like a hydra mm. because it's gone full circle right like your wellness people that were like super duper hippies mm. And your crazy right wing Trump people have like circled back and met into conspiracy world. Mm. So you're not even like in a left and right anymore because the left and rightest points have met mm. together. It's almost like sure. a weird circle. Mm. Well, that's the thing about Trump, too, that is that Trumpist, the weirdo Trumpist people. There's a lot of people that aren't really. They just uh, have distrust of the government, yeah, they're not really the media, Republican. Exactly, or, right? Or, 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 the, or they or might they have, weren't. they probably would, right? Uh, Democrat before, and then they're just kind of, which is like me, because I sort of swing to this, right? You end up, I don't believe any of the conspiracy stuff, right? But uh, I really don't like the way the media works, to tell you the truth. It's not about government, it's the media that seems to. I think, you know, I honestly, I don't, I, I don't think, I don't think the media is even like a useful term anymore just because mm. of like the diversity and point is like, yeah, there's the mainstream media, but like you choose what com media you consume. There's no media being spoon fed to the masses anymore. Mm. People choose their own media now. Sure. So, like, the idea of that, like, the media is brainwashing people or, like, no, telling people lies. Okay. No, you consume your own media and you consume your own truth. But don't but you that, find if the if you see through this, you know, this kind of left-right thing, and, and um, that's what I got me with the pandemic, when, it, when people start talking to you like you're this right-wing person, if you don't agree the fucking pandemic, pandemic's that serious, right? Um, like, it's... It's kind of cooked up by all these, all these experts that you know, because right. I've lived on the planet for X amount of time, and I didn't need them to tell me anything. Right, right. You know that, uh, you know, and you're telling me how to live now. Well, fuck you. Right. <laughs> That's my initial response. Well, I mean, so, yeah. And meanwhile, this other media's going. Oh, they're all right. They're all right. They're all right. And you're wrong. You go. Well, shit. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we we worked in media, and you know, like the media are made up of people, right? Mm. And generally these people in like you know like these kind of mainstream places are yeah college educated they really you know, they be, they work in big organizations corporations they work in cities yeah. where cooperation is like super duper necessary to make things work right yeah sure and i think in like their world view like 
the only way this is going to work is if people cooperate, right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I guess. Yeah. I no, mean, but they got to make sense. There's got to be, you know, you got to, you got to be able to see what the argument is and make sense of it. You know, and there's a lot of stuff that didn't make any sense. Well, I mean, I think that's another major issue, right? Because the information is so fragmented. I think, like, medical... No, not, liter- not, not, yeah. in, not in regard to, you know, the lockdowns and, you know, trying to stop people's movements and all this. That makes sense, you know, to keep people right. down. You know. It was just the whole thing, how bad it really was especially before Delta, because it was right. like, you know, oh, shit, a few people died. Oh, America got slammed, but the rest right. of the world here hardly got touched, you know, in reality. Yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of stuff that you go, oh, shit, man, this is this is all bullshit. What are they talking right. about? Yeah, yeah so, I, I don't know. Like, once again, yeah. it's that spectrum, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Depends where you are. Yeah. Depends on your worldview. Your, your own personal <laughs> yeah. backyard. Yeah, sure. But, you know, like, I mean, I, I you know, I think, you know, like, <laughs> medical literacy is really bad science literacy is really bad um these days i think it's a lot better now because the people people i've noticed uh you know because people talk oh you you're you're the expert you you know whatever what do you know you've never studied anything but okay fair enough i've I, i haven't studied medicine but i do know how to research shit right and and man the amount of information that is online now you can research in your in your hand it's incredible you could literally just cherry pick whatever no, no, okay. you want but online, what i'm saying though, yeah. is that, that uh, all this information which wasn't there you know right. 10 years ago you know definitely not in the last pandemic you know there was no information you just, you just walk straight blindly into anything but now man you've got so much information coming at you or you could delve into right. especially things like scholar.com Google, yeah. I don't know if you know about that, where all the yeah, latest Scholar, papers, yeah, absolutely, yeah, all the yeah. latest papers coming, you can read them, you know, the same as everyone else is reading them. But no one's curating them for quality, though. That's that's I think well, that's a big issue, right? That's right. They're not a lot of them are not peer uh, proofed, right? And or, some are peer reviewed, but the peers are like dodgy and like you know from yeah, india yeah. or something like that right well you gotta yeah. read through it like everything yeah you do you know yeah. like like everything you read in the media and everything else yeah but, but we do have a lot more information than we've ever had before yeah. that's my point yeah 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 that's so point. it's but, a different it's a different uh, kettle of fish than any other time in history yeah but i honestly feel like you know like democracy is really in peril right if you're if you're kind of like letting is people it? kind of like decide <laughs> for themselves for themselves <laughs> and then there you know a lot of people believe the world is flat you know what i mean like i don't i, I know you I know for I'm, a I'm fact not, it's yeah. not <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying you are but or it could be a sizable amount of people do these days right i think they're all kidding don't they? more more so than ever before <laughs> is it that is are they kidding that i, I, I don't, don't really believe they do that i don't think so um, but maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm not. The, maybe I, I'm the conspiracy. You know what I mean? Like I'm buying into that. Um, but yeah, you know, like if that happens, if people aren't able to cooperate to solve problems, mm. then like, then what's the point, right? Like yes. global warming, climate change. Well, like, that's the whole thing, isn't right? it? It puts the whole thing in in peril because nobody's going to believe anything. Exactly. You know? So that's my point. If you if you're going to be the expert, you're going to have to come out with some real arguments and real truths or something you can read and you can believe right and and my own personal in- instance of the antibodies from having the covid right and i've read just about everything you can read and watched every single thing both you know for against and everything else and they always end up with the same argument right well you know which is um this one's really bad and this one's really good but they're both the same <laughs> so I think I and think, we don't know what it's going to be. Well, I mean, I think from a public health perspective, if you get Sinovac and it's like a forty percent chance you're protected, and you get mm. like AstraZeneca with like eighty five or whatever mm. it is, you yeah, know, yeah. just get them both because you know, even if you get the forty percent, you're still chipping away at that eight. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? Just get it. I reckon, Chip I, away at it. You know, I've, I've had a good life, so yeah. you know, if some if I get struck down by lightning tomorrow. Uh, well, I had a, had a pretty good time, so I, I've got my own, right. you know, perspective as but, well. But you know, that eight isn't just you, Stu. That's that's <laughs> the eight people you give it to, bro. <laughs> I'm living here, man. I don't see anyone. <laughs> you know, no, I don't much. see anyone. I don't see uh, anyone really. You know, except me. 
That's funny because I, <laughs> I see I, a lot of people, Stu. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. And you just came from Delta Central, yeah. Delta Spa. Uh, the funny thing is, <laughs> great place. Yeah. Um, and actually, they're open at the moment. I won't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are soapy massages, bro. That's pretty sanitary, you know. Yeah. Well, they got a club upstairs, apparently. <laughs> oh, really? I saw a video of somebody's. Uh, Maybe they're getting no soaped on the way in and then soaped on the way out. You know what I mean? That's cleaned right up. You get two soapy massages. I have to goggle now. something. Or <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the funny thing was that uh, when I did have COVID last uh, year, um, I came good. And okay. after five days or something, and I, I'd already arranged to have a radio show with Athron. Okay. And and he came along on the Saturday night, and I, that Saturday I felt kind of pretty good. And so he came along, said, "Yeah, you get rang up." Said, "We're still doing this," and cause he knew I was sick before, and I said, "Yeah, no worries." And then uh, we ended up coming here. We drank some whiskeys and right. you know, ate too much, and then um, next day I just went poof, straight down into some hole, and I didn't come up again for another week. Oh shit. And uh, and I I had a conversation with the doctor and stuff and had the test. I didn't have COVID tests and co- the reason was that she said to me that uh, you know there's a number of people in the in this area that had the same symptoms as me and some of them would get tested and the, they'd get negative and some of them would get tested and they're positive and they're all the same. It's up to you. Go ahead and you right. do it if you yeah. want. You know, Yeesh. but you don't know what's going to happen next. They might throw you into some fucking. <laughs> That's place, a scary thing too, you know? right? Like, like right now because they throw you in a hotel, like you don't want to get tested, like right? <laughs> exactly, like, that's, that's what's going on. That's the weird thing, like, yeah. like just that kind of draconian stance, like the non-compliance is going to be higher, right? Yeah, why the hell are you going to get tested? But anyway, um, yeah. well, my point is, Athron was here, right here, when I was in the height of my COVID, oh, and right. he didn't get it. Oh, that's real lucky. How about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I, I, the way I see it, you know, it's just. It's just you're just rolling two dice every time, you know. Well, I've heard the recent one of uh, the blood type actually having oh, really? quite a lot to do with uh, people's natural immunity. Oh. I'm O apparently, positive. O apparently O is a pretty good one, oh, which I am. Make thirty seven percent of the population. That's Steve. right. So that's <laughs> funny, isn't it? How how only one percent, you know, ten percent of them actually get sick. Anyway, okay. so uh, thanks for joining the show because we're gonna oh, eat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm starving. Um. And, and uh, too. it's been great talking to you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, it's really great being on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. I really yeah. like your setup over here. And yeah, mm. I know, I'm like it's fun. We'll have to do it again. You know, bring someone down, do a show yourself. Good to I see know. you. Cheers, buddy. How are we going, Chris Lee? Hey, you with DJST. We're going to go back to the music.